procedures in here are standard procedures in, in, in any semiconductor fab. Um, they're under, you know, uh, I mean, we, we put as much, a lot of diligence into maintaining every tool in high working condition, okay, all, all the time. And, and so that's why you don't see, like, that we don't have multiple users. We only have our own users. Right. The same person using the tool every day. Then, then <coughs> It rarely now. It's not mm -hmm. a shared facility. No, because that doesn't work. Not when you're trying to get to these goals. Right. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, so we've asked both Keith and Brent, if this is something like the Intels of the world, they all have this equipment, right? If, not, if not more advanced. Right, right, right. Well, absolutely. So what's the secret sauce? Oh, the secret sauce is that, that growth sheet we saw. Yeah. Okay, and uh, if you, if you now, now that's another whole dimension to the, to the technology, and that is, Let's analyze the operation of these components. And then we got transistors in there, right? We got thyristors. That's not your standard transistor, you know. Um, I mean, um, and, and and the laser. The laser is not your standard laser. And the standard laser doesn't doesn't wouldn't work. And that's why optical interconnect is such a huge uh, barrier for everyone. So even if that secret source sauce was to fall into the hands of Intel. They couldn't do much. Well, they, yeah, if they got that growth sheet, they could start doing something. I mean, uh, How do you stop that from leaking out? I mean, uh, Isn't that growth sheet in, in the uh, patent? Oh, yeah. It's all patent. Oh, it's all patent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's all okay. patent, yeah. but yeah. I mean, people have ways of working around patents. Yeah, that's you know, so yeah. Alter it slightly. Ultimately, the barrier is the, the, is the lack of familiarity. And then how does this thing really work? You, know? okay. you so, can present the guy and say, there it is. And they say, well, wait a minute. You know, yeah. well, how, do you, how do the holes and electrons get into the quantum well? Uh, you know, because this doesn't, it doesn't function like your normal laser. It's a modulation dope laser, so the current flows into and out of the quantum well are, are unique to our structure. So the normal uh, optical person wouldn't say, well, where the heck's the laser? You know, that doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. you know? So you're not too concerned about someone copying this? Uh, not really. Okay. Uh, not really. Okay. You know, and, um, you know, they, uh, the barrier to entry, you know, it, it, would, it, it would be in mastering the techniques to build it. This is the first laser ever that is uh, fabricated with a high temperature needle. See, all electronics, CMOS in the world, you know, they all have high temperature steps. They have that gate oxide, that's a 700, 800 degree uh, oxidation step, then they have others in there too. If you look in the world of three fives, lasers, it's all low temperature. Nobody would dare go to a laser that had to be go through a high temperature needle. Okay, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of tricks okay. that you have to learn. How do you get a laser through a high temperature needle? So Ours is how how uh, how how uh, low a temperature are you dealing with? Well, we're we're dealing in our process with 850C. Okay, it's rapid. It's right. 15 seconds or whatever, okay. but it's 850C. Is there a lot of destruction if you don't get it right? Or? Uh, oh, yeah. You, I mean, 850C for 15 seconds is critical. Right. You don't do you don't do 875. You don't do 20 seconds. Right. Yeah, 10 probably would work, but you pay a price. You know, there's trade-offs. Everything okay. is balanced. Um, the normal laser process is sees 400. That's all they see. And they don't, and they all, it's all gold metallurgy. Whereas in this laser, the top contact is a refractory. So it's a refractory laser. Not that that makes any difference to the lasing function, that's just the metal, but you have to learn how to do that. How do you deposit it? How do you make sure it's stable? It's not easy to, to deposit tungsten, especially when it's only 1,500 inches from the quantum. And so there are a lot of tricks. You know. So are those tricks able to scale into larger production? Oh, absolutely. Right? Okay. It's so yeah. tricky to learn and do. Uh, no, no, no. Oh. Once you, uh, I mean, it's a standard Someone's tool. Someone's teaching you. Yeah. Right. It's, 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 it's yeah, yeah. And Jeff, talk about the transfer of BAE as well. Yeah. Because 
Well, BAE, um, we it, it didn't, uh, you know, they, they, they haven't consummated the laser yet. Okay. But they've done the transistors. Right. And the transistors, it's a, the process is identical. Right. And they have no problem with that. So the only one hickey we had was, you know, we, we make these smaller pieces, and then we go to, you know, that, that's as big as we went. So at BAE, we went to a full three-inch wafer. There's some issues with uh, with uh, stress, okay? It's because we go through the 850 anneal. So at the 850 anneal, if the nitride that we have on the surface is not doesn't have the right properties, then the wafer broke and warped. And uh, for the first run, we lost like four or five wafers due to the wafer bolt. And then we learned uh, it turns out right now the nitride we put down here and the arapithermal anneal they do there works. But their nitride and our nail doesn't work, and our uh, and our nail and their nitride doesn't work. I have a girlfriend like that. So, so you've got each of your uh, team members is assigned to one machine. So, is there roughly? roughly yeah. um, so, there's succession if if somebody leaves and oh, that's a is, that's a that nightmare. That that's a, I mean, Rocco who uh, runs the two goals, the uh, PCD, runs pretty much everything in here. Uh, he had uh, bypass surgery, oh. and he was like very suddenly. Uh, and uh, he was suddenly in the hospital and he was out for like uh, a month and a half. Uh, Couldn't move the machine to the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling? We were stuck. Yeah. I mean, we did a little bit, you know, but we just went so good. Yeah. So, right. so, John's question is a good one. What kind of succession planning do you have in place? Well, uh, actually, right now, that when I, I was telling the other group that uh, with the funding, we, we've, we've identified two additional personnel and, of course, some new equipment. One of the personnel is a backup for Rocco, uh, just for that case, you know. Okay. Um, the other tools, we have a backup for the uh, implanter. I don't have a backup for MBE unless it's Brent. We'd have to scramble a bit there, you know. But they, it, it's really hard to have two full-time MBE people uh, on board yeah. when we have such a lean operation. Mm -hmm. uh, How's Rocco feeling right now? Yeah. <laughs> that was for you. Eager to get back to work. Well, I think it's a good point that the the, 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 the vesture of the uh, the solar and the, that uh, the concentration of efforts and funds can be directed here to yeah. enhance and improve the future. Well, yeah, so we can move it move it to a design stage where we make prototypes and that's really where we got to go. How much longer do you think? How much longer? Well, I mean, uh, we got this milestone chart. I'm, 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 Going by that right now, we, we, we've got this uh, completion to the design point of the next spring, I think it is. Yeah, it's 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 milestone 13, 8. 13. Yeah. yeah, milestone 8. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not backing away from that. Not. Now, uh, one concern a lot of the shareholders have, and it's, it's more a question, like an unanswerable question is, what's stopping, I mean, if people are aware of the work you're doing and how you know, the breadth of... of right work that has to go into developing it. Right. How come someone just doesn't come in and say, you know, 50 cents a share or something and we'll take it out? Like, well, I, say, I, say, I think that's that exposure. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's exposure. Um, if you, um, uh, you know, within another month if we uh, have this announcement with a, with a demo uh, of a laser plus complimentary, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's a mouse. Oh, measure six. Six. Yeah. But if we get the laser and then follow that then with the complementary plus laser, yeah. uh, then what, that scenario is quite plausible. Why it comes not? down to where the stock is, and it comes down to whether or not shareholders are willing to tender to a bid. Because they, they can bid. Yeah. They can't buy it until everyone gets their shares up, though. Yeah. So it depends what news is out there, how people are feeling. I mean, if someone came in today and bid 50 cents, what would happen? I don't know, it's pretty crappy markets right now, so a lot of people might take cash, but people really do believe and they want to stay in for the long haul, they say no thanks. Mm -hmm. So that part of it becomes important, you've got to build it, you know, the confidence back. And absolutely, sure. absolutely. Well, as most of you are aware, this thing gets delivered property to the market, there's no limit as to where it'll stop. So that's kind of where we want to see it go. And how many times in a lifetime do you get an opportunity to be in 
involved in this one. Yeah, right. Well, that's the thing. They're both fearing the takeover for a uh, low ball, but also wondering why it hasn't happened. Yeah. Again. Well, well, then the, the other thing we, too we've that been comes up. Yeah. yeah. We've been, we were start. The other thing that comes up is that you have, uh, if someone comes in at 50 cents a business with the company and the news is out and all the other companies are aware and they think it's oh, a steal, okay, yeah. you have an auction. And you know what? I've, I've seen stocks quintuple in yeah. three months in an auction. Yeah. Four or five bids come in, boom, 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 boom. I don't think it's a, it's a concern at this point because of the proprietary stuff. Right. In fact, that's, uh, that's, that's exactly what will happen. There's lots of people standing by waiting to see if they can, if they can deliver, you, yeah. If you relate this, say, to the mining industry and add Barrick and people like that, if they let all the junior companies get to a point. Sure, they could buy them up for two dollars. You could buy them up for two fifty. They'd sooner give them thirty-five. Yeah, yeah. Because they'd sooner let them do the grunt work and get it there. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you'll find here. Yeah. It'll be very. It's going to be very interesting next. Uh, I think.